as long as you are writing functions that are total, deterministic, and pure, you're practicing functional programming. And notice that this is not incompatible with uh, object-oriented programming or any other paradigm. You could be doing uh, both at the same time. As long as you're writing methods that are total, deterministic, and pure, you're practicing functional programming. So we have, se uh, we have seen how to make small and concise functions that have these three properties. But uh, now we need to put them together into building larger programs, right? And this is uh, what is known in functional programming as composition. And to be honest, once you have the knowledge of these three properties, everything else in functional programming are different composition techniques. So let's look at the easiest case that we can find. So we can write a compose function that takes two, two small uh, functions and makes them into a larger one, okay? So we have uh, a function from A to B and another one from B to C. So what do you think? Uh, what would be the, reach, the result or the output type of this uh, function? So I guess since we are composing a function from A to B with a function from B to C, I guess it should be a function from A to C, right? Yeah, so we need to start with a value of type A, and then if we call F with a such value, we would be able to get a value of type B, and then we can pass it here and finally obtain a value of type C. So the end result would be a function from A to C. So in Swift, we can return uh, functions as uh, results of other functions, thanks to having support for higher order functions. To do so, we just have to open uh, curly braces, declare what are the inputs to this function, which is a value of uh, type A, then in, and then we can invoke f of A, and this would, this will return a value of type B, and we can use that value in order to invoke the function G, okay? So with this simple function, we have seen how we can put two functions together to make a larger one. So we could be doing this over and over until we get our uh, entire program, okay? Yeah, for instance, we could imagine maybe like the first function, it takes an ID and returns an object. And then the second one, when it takes the object, it formats it. So by doing it, you you can get a way to go from the ID to the formatted value and kind of you have encapsulated the part where you are dealing with the business object and formatting it. Exactly. So we we are able to design a small building blocks and then we have a, a general technique of how we put them together. However, we can see that uh, things are not so, so easy most of the time because sometimes the output of a function does not exactly match the input of the next one. Like in the following case. So for instance, in this case, we have a, a composition function where we have a function from A to optional B, and then the next one is from B to C. So now we are not able to uh, provide a value here and then uh, get an optional B and pass it right away to the G function. So what do we do? Well, it seems like this is going to return another function from A, and we would like to return something something like C, but maybe we are not able to provide a C because if we uh, don't get a value uh, as, a, as the result of uh, calling uh, the first function, then we will have to return nil. So yeah. let's, uh, let's see how this looks. So we start with a function that takes an A, okay? If we call F of A, this is going to return an optional. So what do we do when we have optionals? We can if let to safely B. unwrap the optional. Yeah. So we safely unwrap B, and if uh, we actually get a B, we can return G of B. Otherwise, we just return nil. Okay. So this means that we cannot return always a C. We can return a C optional, right? Yeah. Good. So. Uh, this is a possibility to implement this function. But what we are doing here 
is uh, already implemented for us in the Swift API. In Indeed. The, uh, optional. And it is the map function. And it is exactly like, let me comment this out. It's like calling f of a and then map. And here we will get a B if and only if the result of f of a returns uh, an a value. Good, so with this, we are able to um, come with a simpler implementation than the one uh, we had before. We can even make it simpler because as this uh, closure is taking one argument and it's just passing to uh, the argument to the function, we can just pass this uh, G function as the input to the map function. Good. Perfect. So this this works very nicely for for optionals. But yeah, because what, basically we had kind of you know this gap between the signature of f and the signature of g, so we needed to bridge the gap somehow. And what we see is that basically we could say like optionality it propagates down the chain of computation. Exactly. But what if instead of optionals we had something like arrays? Let's see. Uh, I'm going to yeah, let's copy and paste this uh, function. So instead of uh, having B optional, I'm going to have an array of Bs. So now instead of having a C optional, it seems like I will have an array of uh, Cs. And it turns out that the implementation is exactly the same. It works. So as long as we have uh, something uh, here that does not exactly match the input of the second function, but it has the map function, it works. Let's see another example. What happens if we have a result? So now we would have result of B and error. So the result should be re result of uh, C and error. And again, the implementation is exactly the same. Good. So what do we do when, when, whenever we have this uh, sort of uh, duplication in the code? We try to extract uh, this duplication to uh, a generic function, something like uh, we would try to say something like um, we want a generic argument f to write something like we want to have f of b and then f of uh, c. And we would have to say that f has a map function. So in functional programming, whenever we want a type that has the map function, this means the type is a functor, OK? Yeah. The main problem here is that uh, we can see here that Xcode is telling us it cannot specialize a non-generic type f. This means that we are not able to uh, abstract over this type of uh, containers. This is because Swift does not have a support for higher kind of types yet. Good. So it seems like if we want this type of composition, we will have to replicate these compose functions over and over for each type that we want to support. Good. Yeah, and I think so. There is a way in Swift to actually, we could say, emulate this higher candy type. But since it's an introduction video, we're not going to talk about it. But if you want to know about it, this is actually what uh, Bo, your open source library, is all about. So I will put the link in the description, and uh, people can go check it out if they want. Exactly. In Bo, we have a lightweight emulation of our higher candy types and proper representation for functors. So if you actually want to write such uh, code like the, the one we have uh, uh, tried to write, you can go and check the ball documentation uh, to see how it is uh, done. Good, so let's look at the final example for composition. Um, this example is pretty similar to the previous one that we have seen before. But now, instead of having only one function returning an optional, both functions return an optional. So this seems like the uh, final re result uh, type should be similar. Uh, so we start with an A and try to go to uh, an optional B, and then we unwrap it and pass it here to get a C, okay? So we can do something like, uh, again, we open a closure. So we, if let uh, B as the result of F of A, 
then we can return uh, g of b. And if not, we return um, nil, right? So this is very similar to what we were doing uh, before in the map case. So can we replace this by calling map? Well, let's see what happens if we comment this out. Yeah, I think we could have some weird surprise if we call map, right? Yeah, so if we call f of a and then we call map g, like the case we had before, we will see that uh, Xcode is not able to to deal with this. We're going to have to help Xcode maybe by writing some types explicitly. Yeah, so we can say this is going to return a C optional. So yeah, it is not able to infer this, but it is because map is suspecting a function that does not return an option. So as this is returning uh, an optional, the final result would be C under two layers of optionality. So this is uh, cumbersome to work with. Uh, we would need to flatten somehow these two layers of uh, optionality. And this is exactly what the flat map operation is doing. So we have uh, achieved a very similar implementation in this case, uh, as in the previous uh, case with a map. This is uh, a new pattern uh, to compose functions that were both written uh, optionals. So I think and now on line uh, 49, we can remove, I guess, the double optionality. And, exactly, uh, we can remove this. And now we have a proper way of composing these two functions. Yeah. And, and the nice way. Uh, yeah. What we can say is that actually, you know, the double optionality, it wasn't wrong, but for us, maybe it was kind of encoding too much information because, well, when you have a double optional, actually, you can tell whether it was the first function or the second one that we don't need. But in most cases, we actually don't care. Exactly. Um, it is not wrong, but it is uh, going to be cumbersome to work with because we will need to extract both layers of optionality if we want to check if we have an actual value. So the flat map uh, operation already takes care of, uh, of that. And the nice way, uh, the, the nice thing about uh, all this thing is that just like we did before, if we, instead of having uh, optionals, we have arrays, then everything works the same. And if we have uh, results, like, like this, everything works the same. So this type of composition lets us compose functions as soon as uh, we have a flat map operation. And just like in the previous case, we could try to somehow extract this implementation because we have a repeated implementation for every possible type. So we could try to generalize it into some sort of uh, F uh, type where we uh, know that f has the flat map operation and this is what we get whenever we say f is a monad so we've said the m word now we finally said the m word the dreaded uh, monad <laughs> that uh, everyone seems to be so scary of and there is nothing scary about monads it's uh, an abstraction that lets us perform compositions based on the flat map uh, operation only, only that. And again, we are not able to write such a function because of lack of uh, higher candidate types. But as we said before, if you want to take a look at how this code looks like, uh, you can uh, check the bow documentation to see how the higher candidate type emulation actually lets us do this type of uh, thing. Good, so this is uh, everything uh, I have for this episode. Um, I don't know if you want to cover something else. Well, I think we have covered uh, quite a lot of ground. And uh, I think for people following the episode, yeah, I, I think our promise of uh, you giving an introduction to functional programming has been fulfilled like more than we could have uh, hoped for. So first of all, thank you for uh, your explanation. Uh, maybe welcome. I was thinking, you know, 
in terms of maybe giving a, an exercise for the viewers who don't to think about it. So we've seen functors, we've seen monads. And well, if viewers start to read about functional programming, maybe they will hear about something called applicatives. And so yeah. basically, I think we could say we've seen what happens if uh, a function returns an optional. Uh, what happens if we, yeah, if we compose a function that returns an optional? What happens if we compose function that both return optionals? And so applicative is the case of what if the function themselves want to compose are themselves optional, right? Yeah. The thing is that sometimes we are not uh, using the abstraction like that. We typically want to combine like two flows of information into just uh, one. Like right now, we have been seeing compositions that are only the sequential application of uh, two functions. But what happens if we have two or more flows of information, uh, like returning optionals, and we want to merge them into a single one? Well, we typically represent this as the zip function, okay? And zip is going to take three type arguments, A, B, and C. So we could have an optional A, and then an optional B, and then a function F that takes an A and a B and returns a C. And this is going to return C optional. So viewers can try to implement this in terms of the functions that we get in the optional uh, type, and then try to generalize it to other types like arrays or results as we have seen before. Perfect. And yeah, I think like if there is one thing that uh, we should take take away from your explanation is the fact that, you know, functional programming, I mean, it's something that deeply rooted in mathematics and in algebra. So well, the vocabulary comes from algebra and sometimes it can feel like a little bit scary, but actually, you know, words like functors, monads, applicatives, they are just about composing and sequentially composing or concurrently composing, but things that we are very familiar with as, uh, as programmers. Yeah, uh, they have their roots in uh, category theory, which is a branch of uh, mathematics. And it may be a little bit unfriendly at the beginning, but as soon as you start seeing that uh, it encodes patterns, like the ones that we studied when we were learning object-oriented programming, then uh, it becomes easier to understand what these uh, abstractions uh, are used for. Awesome. Well, thank you again so for this I think awesome episode. Uh, once again, so you are the creator of Bo, and uh, if people are really interested, well, I can only encourage you to go and check out Bo because there is actually a very good documentation that goes over all the advanced concepts in the same like uh, didactic way that we've been doing it. So really, like, go check it out. And uh, I think I just have to say once again, thank you, Thomas, for this episode. Thank you, Vincent, for the invitation. My pleasure. So for people watching, you know how it is. Like, comment, subscribe, share. You can do whatever you want. And uh, well, I see you again for the next episode of Sub Community. Thank you for watching. See you. Bye-bye.